Yeah, and now I would like to mention a very deep and special chapter of this cooperation between Rudolf Steiner and Ita Wegmann. She was in touch with him since the beginning of the 20th century. There was no year without conversation, contact, hearing lectures and so on. Some little spotlights I brought. But it was always so, of course. Ita Wegmann was about 14 years younger than Rudolf Steiner, that she looked up to him, he was the teacher, and she, let me put it so, she received the fruits of his research, and he was glad that she made a lot out of these fruits, but he was permanently the one who was giving, and she was receiving. And she had a very strong self-esteem. And if she was in a disagreement with something, she said this, and she was also someone who could even discuss if there was something to discuss. So, they were very independent. She was one of those students by Rudolf Steins who were not at all devotees, if you understand what I mean. She was, of course, a student and receiving, but she always felt as a human being in development and as fully adult and autonome and not depending total on her own feet. And then a dramatic change came in this relationship from almost one moment to the other. And that was in the night when the first Goetheanum burned. Many of you know the last lecture Rudolf Steiner gave and he closes this lecture where already the fire hidden was burning between the wooden walls, not yet seen, but for him, of course, already clear what happened, what will now happen. She closed, he closed this lecture with a verse about transubstantiation, transformation of substance and how the cosmic forces are transforming the earthly substance in wisdom and love through human willing and feeling when we digest the substance. A very, very powerful lecture and verse meditation. And then some hours later, the whole Gyutianum transformed. and went into the spiritual world where all the old anthroposophists shared always, I met quite a number of them. This first Goetheanum is now a temple in the spiritual world. And, but this process was of course extremely painful and Rudolf Steiner had invested even from his own etheric forces. And he was standing the whole night. Marie Steiner was so in desperation that she had to lay down at home. She couldn't stand and see in the flames. She would have lost consciousness. So she was not at the place. She was at home in bed and saw only the red heaven from her window. And Rudolf Steiner stood there and no one dared to approach him, very alone. And Ita Wegmann all of a sudden saw him standing alone. And so 
pale and yeah, totally calm. I will not say under shock, he knew what happened, but completely committed to what he saw and to his own destiny. And then Ita Wegmann dared to approach him and she brought him coffee. And he was so absolutely grateful for this coffee. Copy coffee in Holland was it's a very important issue. But people who saw this from far, they thought that's impossible to offer now coffee. But it was exactly what Rudolf Steiner needed with a lot of sugar in. So she approached him, brought coffee, and then she was also standing and they looked into the flames, not talking furthermore. But she had, through this shock in which she was looking at these flames, a vision of the burning temple of, the, of Ephesus in front of her inner eyes. This was one thing she experienced. And the other experience was seeing these Ephesus flames that she realized in this Ephesus time, I was also standing with Rudolf Steiner looking in these flames. She realized I must have lived with him on earth in that time as well. And then another deep thought came up in her. Maybe I have the task to help Rudolf Steiner to fulfill his work. So she shifted from taking, taking, taking and receiving the gifts and fruits from him into the permanent question, what can I do? to realize what Rudolf Steiner wants to be realized. She realized he needs help. He is a human being and a single person cannot do a lot if not others are gathering. If there are not people really just committing to do what he needs and not, I know I'm self-sending, I know what I want to do, no. Maybe this is not so important. So she immediately realized that her task from now on will be to make her destiny to be an instrument, to become an instrument for Rudolf Steiner's intentions as an initiate. And then later she shared this with him and she asked him if she saw right with these flames and this looking back into an past destiny. And he confirmed. And in this conversation, he also shared the incarnations in between and how important it is that she now really becomes this helping friend again which she was in different ways, more or less harmonious, but supposed to become in the earlier incarnations. And therefore, from that moment on, they had a very powerful spiritual connection. She received a lot of meditations from him Emanuel Salmans and Peter Zeig published a book in which all these meditations are described. I think it's also meanwhile translated into English as a fourth volume of the Itawegman biography. It is amazing going through this work to see 
what beautiful spiritual bread, so to say, these meditations were for Ita Wegmann's further journey. But then, and this is the last point I would like to bring, then in the course of this new commitment, Rudolf Steiner really counted with her. And it was in October 23, when he gave a lecture cycle in Vienna, that Ita Wegmann having with friends in the break, a cup of coffee, Rudolf Steiner was talking with other people, but she could hear his voice and she heard him saying to the other people with whom he was standing, I will write with Ita Wegmann together a book about medicine. Ah, good to know, Ita Wegmann thought. But it was so good that she had heard that because from that moment on, she said, when will we start? And if she would not have known this and again and again asked him to start, and then when they have started to continue, we would not have this book. And this is so important for us to have because it is not only the fundament of the medicine of the future, a Christian cosmological oriented medicine, still many, many things not yet understood and of course under and not yet developed, but it's coming, the seed is there so it's not only this, the importance of this book as such, it is the importance of the collaboration. Because this collaboration in context of this book, and of course parallel this permanently seeing patients, and some of the case stories they have seen together are integrated also in this book. I think most of you know it, Fundamentals of Therapy. It's the only book he wrote together with a co-author. And she wrote for this book her a suggestion for a foreword. And Rudolf Steiner did not take this forward. He wrote another one, which then was taken. But in her documents after her death, her forward was found. And when I became the leader of the medical section, I of course tried to get to know what, what is possible. And during my time, then these biographical volumes appeared and Walter Holzapfel, who was before Friedrich Lorenz, the leader of the medical section, Friedrich Lorenz died and I was the follower of him. But Walter Holzapfel, to whom Friedrich Lorenz followed, he was still alive. He was, so to say, a bit my medical section grandfather. And he showed me this and said, I published some circular letters and in one of these circular, and he gave me these old circular letters who were sent out during his time. And that motiv motivated me, of course, then from that time on also to start to publish newsletters from the medical section. And in the second of then my series of newsletters, I reprinted this forward because it was for me the most precious text I ever, ever read. It was for me the eye opener in two things. One, what was the secret of the cooperation of Rudolf Stein and Ita Wegmann? She describes it in this forward and probably because of that note and the a bit too esoterically concrete character. He did not take it because those who know the book 
No, he writes it so crystal clear in terms from which he hoped that every normal scientist, if he is good willing, will understand or can at least make sense out of it. So you find no higher beings there, no teaching about reincarnation and karma. It's all out of the book. You only find crystal clear thoughts about the connection between macrocosmos and microcosmos, the relationship between nature and the human constitution, and about the main metabolic pathways in the light of spiritual knowledge, you find really only the medical core, but in the framework of macrocosmos and microcosmos. And he is mentioning two books one has to study already in the first chapter if one wants to make sense out of this book. And that is knowledge of higher worlds and occult science. So these two books are crucial for every therapist and every doctor when they want to qualify as anthroposophic therapists or doctors. Yeah, so this is one. It is really the fundament of medicine, but what is now written in her foreword about the collaboration? There she describes the following. She says, the doctor, he knows all the diseases and disorders. The initiate, he knows all the needs of the esoteric path, all the needs of exercises, of meditative needs, of transformative needs, of inner tasks, of inner overcomings, of inner struggles. He knows all the experiences and obstacles of the inner path. And when they work together, then they discover the following, and that is the esoteric foundation of medicine that every illness is the physical projection of an initiation experience. And that was the way they worked together. So when they saw physical symptoms, they immediately developed the counter picture which forces are now working on the wrong place, causing the illness because they could not become active on the right place in soul and spirit. And this secret, how illness comes about through incarnations as a gift of destiny. Rudolf Steiner says in the last medical mantra, which he gave to priests and doctors, the Lord, the Father is sending the illness in order to balance karma, to balance destiny. We balance out of free will our destiny when we start self-education and inner path work. Then we can harmonize and balance our destiny a lot. We will make less battles, we become more tolerant, we become better persons and so our destiny becomes as well better. So we harmonize destiny going the inner path out of our free will. But if we do not enough and our destiny needs other faculties from us, 
then the Father God is sending an illness so that we through this illness develop the missed faculty to balance our destiny. And this insight, which is of course not something one can share with people who are suffering and who have an illness, they need really our help and not reflections like that. But for a doctor, it is a such inspiration because we understand the meaning of the illness and we can give much better and deeper advice how to come through this illness better and how to, yeah, how to help and how to support the patient. And if a patient is asking, is there something I can do myself to promote my health, then we can give him some insight out of this insight, out of this knowledge. And therefore, Rudolf Steiner gave a lot of meditations for patients because many of the patients he saw together with Ita Wegmann in that time were asking for what can I do myself so that my illness becomes better. And so Rudolf Steiner gave a lot of meditations and they are published in a volume for doctors and therapists. And Peter Zelig is now preparing and some are already published that all these meditations for patients are coming out so that they are there for everyone. And even someone who is ill can look, is there something, if he has interest in this regard, then he can look if there is something which might be helpful for me. And I must say this last aspect, which was realized by the way of Rudolf Steiner's and Ita Wegmann's cooperation. This was for me really the door to understand what anthroposophic medicine really can become. An esoterically based medicine which brings together materialistic diagnostics and knowledge about illness and highest esoteric knowledge so that one can enlighten the other for the benefit and well-being of the patient. And it is the key to understand the so-called Raphael mystery. We know the mystery of Michael. Rudolf Steiner spoke a lot about it. But about Raphael, he is not talking a lot. And the most important about Raphael is the so-called Raphael imagination or the Easter imagination. And it is very interesting that in his Easter imagination in October 23, when he speaks about this, he says the East, the Raphael and Easter imagination that is Christ between Lucifer and Ariman, that is the wooden sculpture, which should be in the center of the first Goetheanum and was not burnt because it was not yet finished. Therefore, we have this wooden statue, nine meters high. And when you see this statue, I show you, you all know it, then you can see on the one side, Lucifer and Ariman directly connected with one another, not balanced by the Christ. And on the left side, you see Christ in the middle and Lucifer and Ariman balanced with their forces by the Christ. 
So you see here on the right side, where is the world humor? He is represent this humor is representative for the physicians who had who have, you know, doctors have to have a lot of humor so that they can really help patients to get back their humor and that they have a healing radiation and a sort of yeah lightness in their yeah in the in their way they they handle even severe issues so humor is that you are in your eye a bit stronger than reality so that you are able to survive to cope with reality so it makes a lot of sense uh, that's what i want to say that the humor is there where pathology is ruling and lucifer and ariman are just having their festival and attacking and temptating humans, misguiding humans. And on the other hand, we see here the archetype of healing. And that is the mystery of healing. And that is the mystery of Raphael. And in the Raphael imagination, Rudolf Steiner describes that the archangel Raphael is standing close to healers, brotherly in conversation with them, teaching them about the ill-making and healing forces in the world. And he also says in future, one will celebrate, one will draw out of this imagination a Raphael Easter play, which brings into clear experience the drama of illness and the joy of healing and help. So Raphael is a archangel. When Rudolf Steiner was asked by Ernst Leers, but how can we approach Raphael? Then he said, you know, it is quite easy to approach Michael. But then, long time comes nothing. And then, Raphael. Ernst Leers shared this with me personally. I met him during his lifetime. And he said to me, first I thought he, he, he is not taking me serious with my question, but then I realized how serious this answer was. Because Michael is the Lord of knowledge and it's quite easy to understand something, yeah? to get an idea of Michael's mission. Yeah, you can also share this with children, they will understand. But to realize this mission, to develop this high altruism, this high service mood, this total selfless commitment to the well-being of the world, of other people. This is an immense journey. But that is the quality through which Raphael can reveal himself. He can only reveal between doctor and patient if the doctor can completely instrumentalize his faculties in service of the patient and is not at all reflecting about his own opinion or what he would like to give it as an advice to the patient, all this not, no. To be total in empathy with the other and having this question, please, teach me or your angel teach me how can I serve you best I am in need of therapeutic intuitions I do not know anything what you need please tell me it is this attitude we know from the gospels when Jesus is asking an ill person 
what do you want that I shall do for you? Although, of course, he knew everything. The patient should tell it. It is medicine respecting freedom of the other person. The patient's autonomy, even if he appears in this moment weak and ill. And this service mood, this selfless attitude, that is this quality through which Raphael can reveal. And so Rudolf Steiner could only reveal this mystery of Raphael and also do then later in September 24, the esoteric foundation of the medical section with this Raphael mystery because Raphael could reveal through the specific relationship between Rudolf Steiner and Ita Wegmann, which had this character through which he could reveal. And that is and was for me really the most precious insight when I started to sense what dimensions this encounter had and how encouraging for our therapeutic learning it is to be blessed to know these things and to be able to study it and to look in what regard we can transform ourselves so that we come closer to this impulse. And for those who don't know it, in my last uh, School of Spiritual Science meetings in the medical section before I uh, was retired, I put together all those texts and key ideas about Raphael documents as study material for medical section members, but also I tried to bring it in a form in which one can publish it for a wider community who has interest. And this is translated in several languages and also in English. And you can get it easily, I think, even through the internet, if you Google that, but also directly through the medical section at the Goetheanum. It's a cheap little booklet, but the content is very deep. And I am glad that I could share some of these aspects on Ita Wegmann's birthday for the first time in my life on her birthday. And I really thank you and particularly Milena who made the suggestion that I shall contribute this here, that this was possible in this Corona times. I think it's important that we also reflect spiritual aspects of medicine and not only the fearful materialistic ones from which we are surrounded. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Michaela. I thought that book was like 400 pages until you turned it to a sign. <laughs> um, OK, yes, thank you so much for this rich, huge story. and. Um, beautifully shared, warmly shared. Thank you. Um, we're going to move a little bit quickly here on. Um, no. And I will just hand the mic over to James, who will be introducing Jamin uh, once I just put these mutes on. Okay.